Hi guys, this is Tensor from the Tensor Programming Blog. Welcome to our Elm Tutorial Part 4. In this tutorial we're going to create an analog clock that has an hour hand, a second hand, and a minute hand. Now, the reason we're going to do this is to demonstrate subscriptions. Subscriptions in Elm are how your application can listen for external input. Basically, if you have anything like a keyboard event, mouse movements, or if you want to record web socket events, things of that nature, or in our case, record time, you need subscriptions in your application. Now this also is going to add another concept into our application, which we're not really going to get into, and that is the object of commands. Commands in Elm allow you to do side effects, now, I'm not going to really go deeper into what commands are because we're not really going to use them. You will see them in our application nonetheless. So let's get started. First, we need to install our packages. So let's install the core library here. Because we're going to use Scalar Vector Graphics, or SVGs, we need to import the Elm library for SVGs. And that's going to be Elm package install elm-lang backslash SVG. And that will install it. If we take a look at our elm package.json, you will see here that it says elmlang svg and the version number. So now let's start with our imports. So we're going to import HTML, but the only thing we're going to expose is the type of HTML, and that's because it's the only thing that we're going to actually use in this application from that library. We also need to import html.app because we're going to be using it. We're going to import the svg library that we just installed, and we're going to expose everything inside of it. We're going to import svg.attributes. Now this is very similar to the html.attributes. It gives us access to the svg attributes for the svg elements. We're going to import the time library and we're going to expose the time type. We're going to expose the function for millisecond and the function for second. So as you can see I've now divided our application into four different parts. The model, the update, the subscriptions, and the view. Now this is slightly different than what we've done before. Usually we don't have a subscriptions area, but this is because we are working with time now. So let's get started first with our main function. Now as you can see, we're not using the beginner program part of app. We're using the program part. We're also not using a model type here. We're using an init type instead. And it is basically just the initialization of our model. We're also importing a subscriptions type here as well, or a subscriptions function rather, into our app.program. Now let's start with our model. As with all applications, I like to start with the type alias model. And our type alias model is just going to be time. We're going to create an init function and our init function is going to output a model and then a command type of message. Now as you can see our init output 0 and then command dot none. That's because we have no commands in this actual application. So that's all we need to do for the model part of our app. For our update part we need to create a type for message. Our type for message is going to be tick time and this is because our message is basically going to update every single time that we get a type of time from our time subscription. I know that sounds a little convoluted, but you will see as we create our subscription what I'm talking about. We're going to create an update function. It's going to take in a message, a model, and output a tuple of model command type message. So we're going to use pattern matching, as you can see, case message of. We're going to say tick new time, new time, command dot none. Now what this is basically saying is that if we get a message of tick, spawn a new instance of time, and send it up to our model. So this is all we need to do for our update function. Our subscriptions is going to take in a model and it's going to output a subscription message. Our subscriptions is going to take in the model and it's going to equal time dot every second tick. So what this function is basically doing is that every second it's going to update the tick message. 
or it's going to send a tick message rather to the update. The update's going to pattern match this tick message and it's going to spawn a new time instance which is going to use to update the model and the view. So we can actually do instead of seconds we can do milliseconds and it will update every millisecond instead. So let's build this view first. Our view is going to take in a model and it's going to output HTML and a message. Now our view is just going to output an SVG element. SVG elements are like HTML elements in that they have two lists and one is for the attributes and the other one is for what's inside the actual SVG element. So in this case we're going to have attributes but we're also going to have a circle SVG element inside of this element. The circle obviously is for our clock face and then we're going to have each of the hands on top of the circle. So our SVG element is going to have a view box and the properties are going to be 0, 100, 100 and width of 300 pixels. The circle is going to have a CX of 50, a CY of 50 and a radius of 45 and we're going to make it red. So now we need to create the elements for our hands. So let's start with our second hand. So we're going to create a second hand function which takes in the model. We're going to use a let in binding for this. Now first we need to find the angle. Then we need to find the hand x coordinates. And then we need to find the hand y coordinates. For our angle element we're going to use a function called turns. And what this does is it converts the amount of turns into an angle in Elm. So basically every 360 degree turns is going to correspond to one degree. I know that sounds a little weird but you'll see what I'm talking about when we actually punch it into the view. So we're going to do time dot in seconds model. Now I deliberately made a mistake here because I want to show you the Elm time module actually works. So for our x hand we're going to do 50 plus 40 times the cosine of the angle. For our hand y element we're going to do the same but just with a sine instead of cosine. Now this is all going to be taking place inside of a line SVG element. So we call the line element. We give it two lists. The first list is going to be the attributes. So we're going to have the x1 be 50 and the X1 and the Y1 are the origin points of the actual hand. So these are going to stay fixed. The X2 is going to be our hand X. And the Y2 is going to be our hand Y. And we're going to color the hand black. So now let's import the actual second hand into our SVG here. And take a look at what it will look like. Don't forget to pass the model through the second hand function. Uh, I made a mistype here for millisecond. And apparently I mistyped subscriptions as well. I accidentally didn't pass model through view but now it should work. If we run Elm Reactor as you can see our second hand is actually going around the circle every once a second. What we need to do is correct this now. Now to correct this we're going to change it from in seconds to in minutes. If we reload our program you can see that now it's moving about six degrees every second. And the reason we want that is because we have 360 degrees in a circle and of course 6 times or 6 divided by 360 degrees is 60. Now let's make our minute hand an hour hand. Now I'm just going to copy the second hand, paste it twice. This is going to be our hour hand and this will be our minute hand. Now let's build our minute hand first. So instead of turns with our minute hand we're going to use a function called degrees which changes the radians into degrees. Also because we want a float instead of an integer we're going to call the to float function on this entire thing. And then we're going to call floor on it to round everything down. We're still going to use time in minutes but we're also we're going to take the modulus of 60 of it. And then we're going to multiply it by 6 and subtract 90. Make sure to put a space between your subtract and your number. So we also need to change the size of the hand Y and the hand X. So we're going to make it smaller. So we're going to make both 50 plus 33. And then we're going to add a stroke width to the actual line itself. 
In this case, let's make it three pixels wide. Now let's add our minute hand to our view and let's take a look at what it'll look like. So if we reload it, now we have the minute hand. Right now it's 524 where I am. So this minute hand is about right. So now let's do our hour hand. So our hour hand is a little bit like our minute hand. So I'm just going to copy this angle function from our minute hand. Our hour hand, rather than doing time in minutes, we're going to do time in hours. Then we're going to take the modulus of 12 of that. We're going to multiply it by 30 and then subtract 90. We also want to make our hour hand significantly smaller than our second and minute hand. So we're going to change this to 25. We also want to have a stroke width for our line here for our hour hand. And we're going to make it skinnier than our minute hand, so we want it to be two pixels wide. So now let's add our hour hand to our view. So now let's take a look at our application now. So this is our hour hand. This is our minute hand and this is our second hand. Now as you can see our hour hand seems to be wrong because it's it's five o'clock here but it's showing that it's about nine o'clock. The reason why it's showing nine o'clock is because it's showing universal time. So if we look at the universal time it's 21 here. Anyway there's our clock. We could add numbers to it. We could uh, change the way the second hand moves. In fact if you want to see it in a more tick fashion. We can change this to second. And if we reload it, as you can see our second hand moves six degrees every second. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you like the content here, please feel free to subscribe. If you dislike the content, feel free to throw a dislike. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions, please comment. Hope you guys have a good day.